Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'da habita fillah, a question was asked. I have a controversial question. And I'm going to give it bil ikhtisar because some of the things are maybe not appropriate for me to mention right now. But the crux of the question, from what I've read, it seems to be a case uh, well, from... I understand that it's obligatory to obey the Muslim ruler as long as it does not involve disobedience to Allah. I also know that it is wrong to speak against the ruler publicly. However, I find it difficult to defend certain rulers when other Muslims attack them on social media, either because of sins or oppression uh, that they are doing or conflicts or whatever the case may be. So how do we deal with this? First and foremost, we have to establish, as our brother has rightfully said, that from the minhaj rabbani, meaning the divine minhaj, that which was legislated by Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in countless statements, like the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَعَتِيُوا اللَّهُ وَعَتِيُوا الرَّسُولُ وَهُولِ الْأَمْرِ مِنْكُمْ فَإِنْ تَنَزَعْتُمْ فِي شَيْءٍ فَرَدُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِلَىٰ آخِرَ الْآيَةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, obey Allah, obey Allah and obey His Messenger. And those charged in authority over you. The ulama, they mention that obeying Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that's mutlaq, that's ta'a, mutlaq. That is complete, no question uh, in everything. We, the Quran commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have a, it's the divine speech of Allah. There's no questioning that. And likewise, authentic ahadith of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there's no debating that. We don't debate the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, especially those things which are clear. When it comes to leadership, this is not ala iqlaq, and this is from the kalam of the ulama, that it's not unrestricted. And from those ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which illustrate this and show that this is a qa'idah, that this is a principle of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah and what distinguishes us from ahl takfir and the people of violence and those takfiri groups and the khawarij and many of the other groups who that may not be their usul and their foundation but we already know how so many of the groups, even some of the Sufi groups love to speak about the leaders. And when you mention about certain countries, they belittle and attack the leadership as well as the scholars. And they are from Tasawwuf. These are the people of Tasawwuf even. So everyone has a view. Everyone has an opinion. But not everyone has knowledge. And not everyone has a Zawabi. So let's go to see, we've heard what they say, but let's see what our beloved Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said. Qala nabiyyana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sami wa ta'ala marriya al-Muslim fi ma yuhibu wa qariya. Ma lam yu'miru bi ma'asiyyatin fi idha umiru bi ma'asiyyatin fa la sam'a wa la ta'a. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, and you'll find this in Sahih Muslim. He said, sami wa ta'ala marriya al-Muslim. He said, hearing and obeying the Muslim leader. And those things which you love and those things which you hate. As long as he doesn't order you to do sinfulness, disobedience to Allah. And if he orders you to do disobedience to Allah, then there's no hearing and obeying. And the ulama mentioned in that matter. That doesn't negate thought because this differentiates us between ahmetic fear. The Khawarij will say, ah, the leader ordered this sin or whatever the case may be. So now there's no more hearing and obeying. Let's rebel, let's speak about him, let's spill blood. This is the minhaj of the Khawarij, the minhaj of the neo-Takfiris.
But the Minhaj Rabbani, the way of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is adhering strictly to those texts. Hearing and obeying. In that which you love and hate, the government, they may take, your ta take taxes from you. They may do unlawful things that you are forced to do. But that doesn't negate your obedience to them in that which is just. In that which is in accordance with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has commanded. So it doesn't negate his obedience. And you mentioned, of course, the sinfulness of speaking against the ruler. And as we know that the ulama mentioned, and there's countless books, have, uh, this is uh, Mansus on a Salaf, on Salaf and a Saleh, that the minhaj of the Salaf, the books are full of these principles and countless books that talk about aqidah, they mention this mas'ala to distinguish the creed and the minhaj methodology of Ahlul Sunniti wal Jama'ah from the Khawarij and the Murjia and the Mu'tazila and the various Mu'attala and the Jahmiya and the Qadari and all the other groups that deviate. And as some of the imma of the Salaf said, they all lead to the safe, all of Ahl Bid'ah they come back to the safe, meaning that they come back to rebellion. And subhanAllah, I never really imagined that until you, you see, see your Muslim brothers and sisters that don't even live in Muslim countries. Some of them are Sufis, they're hardcore Jamaat Tabliq and they're hardcore this, hardcore Khan Muslimin, hardcore this group and that group, no beard, no nothing. And some of the first things when they, you come from Saudi Arabia, they ask you, the government did this. What's going on with the government and this? What's happening here? We heard this. We're reading the news about this. So they're giving you all these issues, and you just say, SubhanAllah, are you judging by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rule? Where's your beard? You look like baby face. Spack, spack. Where's your judgment? And you're smoking up the masjid because your thobe is so long, you're drowning us out. The Prophet wasallam commanded, commanded us and said that it's Muharram. How did he say it's Muharram? Because it's what? If there's a wa'id attached to it. There's a punishment attached to the one who, whose garment is too low out of pride. But yet you boast, you arrogantly do that. And instead of asking about Mecca and Medina, instead of asking about Ahl Sunnah, instead of asking about the ulama, you, tell me, you ask me about the first thing you say is the government did this, we read about this, and such and such happened here. So it shows you there's a difference in methodology. And Ahl Sunnah has a clean tight with that methodology because it's from Allah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we know a last point, and this is where I see a lot of youth, some of the youth of Ahlul Sunnah go wrong, and even the du'at in the past. And this is one of the things Ms. Uh, Faisal Jamaiki used to attack some Salafis about. And this is a point, unfortunately, that he was correct with. So just because someone is from Ahl Bid'ah and Ahl Takfir doesn't mean they're, they don't yusibu yukhti, that they don't get something correct and something incorrect in a criticism. Because some of our brothers went to such extremism that they would even defend if sin and oppression took place. So what you have to know, I don't know any of the ulama, and that goes from those who they criticize and attack like Sheikh Rabi, and I know a major student, a, a Sheikh, that he told me in the gatherings, because I was talking about this issue with him years ago, and he said, this is the view of Sheikh Rabi. Sheikh Rabi said this. I was next to him. And he was a very close relationship with many ulama. And I've met many ulama with him, going to their houses and traveling with this brother, Sheikh Ihab Nadr, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, a Philistini, one of our beloved brothers who knows English. May Allah bless him. Anyhow, the point being, Ahabit Fillah, it is not from the minhaj of the Salaf to defend oppression. So when these issues come up, it's not your job to, to defend oppression. That's not going to take anything from, way, from you. If oppression is being committed, then you either are keeping silent, and if there's no maslaha in talking about it, then there's no maslaha in talking about it. There's no benefit. 
because these issues should be reserved for the ulama and those people who have position in those societies to, to give advice to the ruler. So what you have some people who go to such extreme that they'll, something that's clearly oppressive and clearly wrong, they will defend it. Tooth and nail. But Islam does not order you to defend oppression. And then there are those who speak about issues with no benefit. So if there's no muscle, how don't speak about it. People are always going to have their view. How many times do I get comments about this regime and this regime? I don't, my, my uh, member of Dawah is not for that. By training, I'm a political scientist. This is what I went to university for. But that's not reflected in my Dawah because that's not really in accordance with calling to the book and the sunnah but rather embracing those kawai and realizing those kawai and those principles are real that even when you're under attack, even when it might shake you a little bit, that it's still, that's the menhaj rabbani. That's the methodology, the divine methodology. It's not to attack the, the rulers. And the Prophet والسلام, also mentioned, and this is something we have to know and understand, قال نبينا محمد عليه الصلاة والسلام إن حديث أبي هريرة رضي الله تعالى عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إنما الإيمان جنة يقاتل من ورائه ويتقى به فإن أمر بتقوى الله عز وجل وعدل كان له بذلك أجر إن يأمر بغيره كان عليه منه أخرجه مسلم. In this hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام, the hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه, he said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, a ruler of the Muslims is a shield for them. They fight behind him and they are protected by him. If he enjoins fear of Allah, the exalted and glorious, and dispenses justice, there will be a reward for him. And if he enjoins otherwise, he will receive its consequences. So if someone is doing sin, that's on them. All you can do, if you have the ability to do so, is give advice. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of Abi Sayyid al-Khudri, رضي الله تعالى عنه was, قال, سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول, من رأى منكم منقرا فليغيره بيا. فإن لم يستطيع فبي لسانه فإن لم يستطيع فبي قلبه وذلك عدو في الإيمان رواه مسلم This hadith in Sahih Muslim The Prophet ﷺ said Whoever sees a uh, munqar then change it with his hand Then what did he صلى الله عليه وسلم said and showing us that that qudra that ability is a condition for ibadah and commanding the good and forbidding the evil He said فإن لم يستطيع So if he's unable to do so letting us know that some people would be unable to do so then change it with the tongue and if he's unable to do so, then change it with his heart, meaning hate it, detest the evil that your brother or sister is doing. And he said that is the weakest form of faith, but it's still a part of Iman. So let's just know we're not to, offend, to defend anything that's oppressive, oppressive policies, oppressive individuals, oppressive actions. That's not our job. But our job is to call to the book in the sunnah and practice it and preach it. And be patient upon it. And the last point I want to mention, which is a mas'ala, which needs much more uh, detail, because in, in most of Islamic history, there was greater leadership. There was either a khalifa, a leadership for all the Muslims, or Muslims they had, that they'd broken into kingdoms and fiefdoms and things and so on and so forth. And they had, but for many of us, and a lot of these questions you get, they're coming from the West, people who don't even live under Muslim rulership. That doesn't give them the right to sit and talk about the leaders in Muslim lands, but there really isn't sam'il al there is here an obedient for you if you don't live in Egypt, and you live in the UK, or you live in uh, uh, Cardiff, and you're talking about Saudi Arabia. No, you don't live in Saudi Arabia. But those of us who are from America and from other countries, we have to obey the leader and respect the authority that we're under. So we're here and living in Saudi Arabia, so we respect the leader. We hear and obey the leader. 
in that which is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're under that by the act, the uh, contract of entering the country. But those who are outside the country, you can't say that you're, you know, have bay'ah or something to the leader of such and such country or such and such country. You're not a part of those countries. So this is, these are masail, major masail, fiqiyah reserved for the major scholars to go into depth. But in general, you're not obliged to those policies. You're just obliged to follow Allah and his messenger wherever you are and not to be on the menhaj of the Khawarij and speak about the leaders, especially in unnecessary capacity. Now, if it's a thing that you have a complaint to a leader and you have the ability to reach them or write to them or whatever, then that's different from the point of advice and so forth. That's, that's beautiful. But other than that, if there's no benefit, no masalih or mafasid faqat, then, there's, then you avoid it. Meaning there's, only be, there's no benefit and there's only harm, then you avoid it. And I hope that that's clear. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wassalamu alaikum wa sallam. Ala Nabiya Muhammad.